Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modellers Workshop. My name's Ian and this is my kitchen table where I do all my modelling. Well, as I said on my last video, it's the second review I'm doing for you guys and it is, over my shoulder here, Tamiya's fantastic FAMO and SDAH116 tank transporter trailer. Uh, it's a kit, as I said before, I wanted, well probably since it first came out, you know, you cover these beautiful large scale Tamiya kits. And I managed to pick this one up uh, off eBay uh, quite a while ago for a really good price um, compared to what it is to buy a new one. And so it's been squirreled away in my stash since then, waiting for the right build to come along. And as my last review was for Rifle Models uh, Panzer 4 House J late production, that's the right model that came along to go on the tank transport for this. Um, dug it out of my stash, had a look at it, thought, oh, I need to do, get a review done. So. Yeah, there we are. Uh, enough waffling for me. Let's get a kit on the table. Let's get it opened up and see what's inside. So here we are on the table. Um, the box is massive. I can hardly fit it into the frame. Uh, again, Tamiya. Words fail me sometimes. The box art is fantastic. Uh, I, I can't express how brilliant this picture is even with the line drawing of a sort of uh, well a, a, a typical load on the trailer that's a panzer uh, a stug sorry uh, with the long barrel 75 and then if you look in the in the top here you've got the panzer for the short barrel 75 so beautiful box art so first of all it's tell me a kit number 246, um, 135th scale, uh, so it's the FAMO and SDAH116, uh, now I'm going to try and read the German there, 18 ton TAMO and tank transport trailer, so uh, look on the side, we've got a huge box, we have to move it around to get it in the frame, so we've got a colour, really nice colour rendition of the trailer, as it would have been broken down to drive or winch the tank on. Uh, that's how this thing happened, the, the rear bogey set, they, they, they winched the trailer down onto the deck, bogies were moved out of the way, tank recovered onto the trailer, bogies moved back in, winch it back up, hitch onto the fan and away to go. So it's all in Japanese, um, although it does tell you this is spring, this camouflage pattern here is spring, Russia spring 1944, which is why I'm going to build it with a Ryfield model kit. Uh, again, just the end of the box. You can see how old it is, an old old box. So there's your kit number, your miniature, mini, military miniatures 246, item number 35246. Okay, the beautiful classic Tamiya symbols. And then this is the German grey colouring of the vehicle. Uh, again, with a grayed in Panzer IV as in a load, showing you the chain attachments and that. And this is the Workshop Company 1942 in Germany. Well, Hermann Göring, Workshop Company 1942 in Germany. So this is an earlier model. And this is just the same as the other end. So, now I have had a look in this, I'll be honest with you. Couldn't resist it when I first got it. So, I don't know if the sprues are in it, how they would be when it came out of the factory, but they're in it neat and tidy the way I left it. And as with Tamiya, top, top opening box, and you get beautiful packing. We've got the instructions and then a whole hush of sprues. Now, there is an extra sprue in this kit. Uh, this sprue I got out of a Tamiya kit of the SDKFZ uh, 222 uh, armoured reconnaissance vehicle. It came with an extra sprue and I kept it for this kit to go in stowage in the back. So that isn't part of the kit. So we're going to set that to one side. So, instructions. Masses of plastic, and then we've got a, a cardboard interior here where we've got the trailer deck and then a box in here with other parts in it. So let's go through the instructions first and then we'll start looking at the parts. So, Tamiya's usual nice printing instructions. It's in booklet form, which is really good. So we'll open it up. There is 
all the blurb about the development of half tracks and the FAMO and what it was used for. Uh, and you've got time as usual, tools you'll need, cautions, basic info. You should read it, it will tell you a lot. Usually, what they'll say in here is they've got color call outs for everything, but when the color's not specified, it's to be painted the same color as the body. So refer to page 34 or 36 to what colour. So it's either going to be German grey or it's going to be uh, German sand colour with camouflage. So first of all we start with the engine. So it's great. If you want to leave the side covers off the engine, you're going to have full engine detail. You put a little bit of wiring in there, you're going to make it look fantastic. Moving on to the chassis. Uh, this looks to be some sort of transmission part here. Uh, maybe air tanks there if it's brakes or fuel tanks. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this. I have built uh, one or two other Tamiya half tracks and they go together really well. So yeah, there we go. Engine on a transmission. That's probably going to be a fuel tank uh, there. And all the rear uh, road wheels, their, their suspension arms, the rear idler wheel tensioner. And there's the reduction drives for the drive sprockets. Drive sprockets road wheels, exhaust pipe, look at this, twin exhausts, fantastic detail going on, front road wheels off the, the cab, and then the front suspension unit, again there is no glue symbol so it looks like the wheels are going to be positionable for adding a bit more interest to the, middle, the model, right, a coupler assembly, so I'm assuming that's something for the trailer, yeah, look at that, it's going on the rear, so that's a trailer coupler assembly. Front wheel's going on, road wheel's going on, this is the recovery winch here. Winch, winch cable going out to the rear, if you need to winch the tank on, and a little bit of steering control, uh, steering rods there for the steering gear. Individual track links, now that's an interesting development on this kit because most Tamiya half tracks just have the rubber band tracks. Which in themselves they're okay if you're going to muddy them up and all that, but they you know they're difficult to get weight on tracks. Um, this looks like you're going to get a, an interesting build uh, where you're going to get a decent look of sagged weight on tracks. Um, should be really really great for the detail. Radiator housing, front grille, front bumper, lights. Obviously a panel, a couple of wire cutters, gear selectors, handbrake, front driver's compartment pedal assembly. Moving on to the back of the driver's compartment, the rear body, seats for the guys, lots of detail here, steering column, beautiful call outs for colour, for painting, and it's quite a simple instrument panel, I've, you know, the same similar to most other uh, half tracks of time we produced, you can get really good details and it will, it will lift the detail of the vehicle if you get it painted nicely. And front front wings and bonnet going on, and the front driver's compartment, the rear passenger seat going on there. Uh, windscreens, um, air cleaner assembly, more bits and pieces moving on, building it up. Uh, side panels for the radiator uh, for the engine compartment, bonnet stays, rear load bed, part twenty three. It's quite a big instructions this. It's a big model, so lots of steps. Uh, front wheel, uh, looks like spare tyre. Yeah, spare tyre assembly. So it's this spare tyre under the body. There's the rear load bed sides. Uh, rear load bed going on, bonnet top going on. Frames, grab handles, greeblies as folk like to call them. Uh, all the detail stuff. And then we've got tool drawers. Uh, tow and stay, uh, jack, tow and rope. This will be good to get some, if we can get some foot wedge tools to go in there. Just liven it up a bit. And that looks to be the finished, yeah, finished construction for the half track. And then we move on to the trailer. Uh, main frame assembly, the tow and A frame. Interesting to note there is screws and metal rods here. So I don't know if that's a strengthening thing, but we'll see when we get it built. That looks really quite interesting. Again, if it's Tamiya, you know it's going to be okay if you follow the instructions and take care. 
Yeah, there's the A-frame going on at the front frame of the trailer. Suspension units for the front axles, all gluing together. Axles itself, and it looks like they're steerable. Yep. And more screws and, and metal rod assembly. So they're obviously steerable and interlinked, so you're going to get positionable wheels for the axle, which is going to be really good. Because if you want to move it around the corner or make it look more interesting, you've got the option to do that, which is brilliant. And, you know, Tamiya, what can you say? Spare wheel assembly, all your mud guards and such going on. Uh, this looks like to be the mainframe assembly rear. So this is where the driver's cab, well, the, the rear steering cab will be, because you can see in the box top, there's a guy sitting in the back steering the cab for the length of the vehicle to get it around corners. Uh, yep, so more metal rods and screw assemblies going on, steerable axles, so axles going in, and then you've got the seat, steering wheel, and the windscreen for the rear cab, all going together, winch going together, that'll be for winching the trailer up to it and hitching it up, sundries, and then wheels and bits and pieces, and then that will should nearly be the final assembly then you're moving on to that's the final assembly involving wheels should i say then we're moving on to the actual flatbed trailer assembly here um so you've got the lower piece and that looks like strengthening bars or something going in there yeah support plate so there's metal plates going in to strengthen it, which is fantastic, because that's going to make it as strong as you like. And again, screwing it together. So this is going to be really, really strong. So it will take any weight of model. You know, if you have a tank on the fuel, tra fuel metal tracks, you know it's going to hold it. So well done, Tamiya. Um, more detail screwing together. More detail under the trailer. Again, more screws. And I'm assuming that most of these screws are going to be hidden underneath. So you won't actually see it when the build's finished, but it'll obviously be holding it together nice and strongly. Uh, more detailed stuff going on here. Chains, these will be the fastening chains. Once the tank's on, you strap it down so it doesn't move when it's been driven around. And then this is the rear going on to the rear deck and then the front of the trailer getting joined on to the FAMO. Wow, that's a big build. And okay, there we go. So this is them showing you how to hitch up the, train, the chains to, to the tank to make it fast on the trailer. All your figures, so we're going to have fun painting all these guys. And once we get the figures on and, and stowage in the back here, and some figures on the tank, it's going to be a fantastic diorama piece. And then we'll be moving, no doubt, on to... Yeah, so more information about how things are done and how things are pulled on. So you've got a diagram of the trailer being dropped off. The tank being winched on, so there's another diorama option if you want to do that. Get the winch from the farmo into the tank, get it winched on, and then it going together. And even uh, the movable ramp, and they had a Sherman on the back. So loads of different options there of what you can do when this thing's built up. And then the colour scheme, so you've got the Stug Brigade Russia 1943. It's the first colour scheme. Um... The next one here is the Stug Brigade Russia Spring 1944. And then finally, the Hermann Guren Workshop Battalion Vehicle Maintenance Company 1942. Uh, so that's your overall grey colour. Uh, your sand with uh, green and brown. And then these are thicker sand with green and brown stripes. And of course, if you're moving it from spring into autumn and winter, you'd apply a whitewash over this um, to winterize it. And then obviously this is the final bit of coloring for the top deck of the last one for 1942. Wow, big instructions, a lot to do. So let's get on and have a look at the parts. Right, first sprue that I come to is a sprue, time your usual staple bag, so just pop the staples out of the way and make sure they don't rip the parts as you pull it out. Now, let's do the drop test, shall we? Lovely, lovely crisp plastic. Tamiya plastic at its best. Now, I didn't mention at the start of this when this kit was produced, but if you can see the copyright date on this one here, 
the molds were produced in 1999. So this kit is 21 years old and it's beautiful. The detail is absolutely stunning. Uh, part of the gearbox here, all the bolt assemblies there, lots of little small parts here. We've got leaf springs. You hear my finger rubbing off them. Every individual springs there. It's going to take a wash beautifully. Um, there is a little bit of a burr line down the springs that will clean off with a swipe of a blade or a, or a sand and sponge. But all in all, the detail is what you'd expect from Tamiya. It's stunning. There's the winch, part of the winch assembly. That looks to be track tensioners for the final drive and steering bits here and there. And very, very fine, fine details. Very, very fine. Pedal assembly, part of a jack. Two exhausts, splendid stuff. In the same bag, we have got the engine. Beautiful detail on the engine. Rocker covers. These are the tool trays that go on the back body of the family. Loads of detail in there already, but as I said, I'll try and get some photo etched tools to throw in there to make it look a bit more interesting. Exhaust manifolds, beautiful casting. And, let's be fair, not too many ejector pins anywhere that they need not be. So, yeah, well done Tamiya. Fantastic kit to start with. Now the other Tamiya half tracks I've built, I've built the 37mm anti-aircraft armoured half track years ago and I've built quite recently the uh, 251, uh, no sorry, the S. S, S the KFZ 71 with the quad mount on. It's not as detailed as this. I mean, brilliant kit, but it doesn't have the detail of this. Right, next sprues. These look to be parts for the trailer. Look at the detail. There is wood grain effect on all the wood decking parts. It's going to take a wash beautifully. Wash and a dry brush, you're going to have fantastic detail on this. Steering box assembly for the rear rear trailer unit and okay we've got a couple of figures here this details may be a little bit soft but it's sharp enough sharp enough a little bit of a sink in his chest here um, and a little bit of burring down the side of his head if we can get that to focus but it'll clean off with a swipe of a sharp blade um, gears look at that chain and gear detail Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the canvas cover for the cab. A couple of injector pins underneath. You're not going to see it anyway, but they'll be easy enough to clean up if you wanted to do that. I probably will, but you don't have to. But lovely tension marks on the canopy. Now, if you give that a dry brush and a wash and a dry brush, you know, you're going to exacerbate the low parts with a little bit of dark in an area and highlight the, the, the tops of it. The, the tightening marks to, to look like one canvas that's going to look beautiful. Right next sprue is the looks like rear parts, rear tubs of the family. So pop these out. Sorry, not the camera there. Beautiful detail. So this is your, your rifle butt sockets. Uh, you check a board floor in there, you see that the camera, the light's picking that up. Beautiful, sharp, crisp detail. Absolutely fantastic. There's the sides of the front tub. Uh, look at that, yeah, pressed pressed sheet metal. So you've got the, the strengthening pressings in the metal here. And in the reverse, you've got the hollows as they would be. And very, very, very shallow eject pin marks that are going to clean up no problem at all. I know everyone slates Tamiya for ejection pin marks, but let's be realistic here. This kit is 21 year old. Um, you know, we're modelers. Let's clean it up and get on with it. I, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, loads of individual track links. I'm not going to take them out, but they look fantastic. Details really good. No ejector pins anywhere where you don't need them. And I wish they were with all Tamiya half tracks because I really like weight on you know individual tracks weight on wheel type detail better than the rubber band tracks right this is a double sprue here 
a mixture of possibly final drive parts. It looks like it's got the, the canopy stays for the rear rear tub of the load bed and some figures. Again, details are okay, you know. Uh, I'm no expert figure painter. It's quite heavy burring down the side of him, but it, it will clean up. It's not a problem. These are obviously your axle tubes for the rear suspension on the half track tools and road wheels for the half track. Well, road wheel axles for the half track. Lovely parts. Right, another double bag. Uh, wheel rims and wheels. I'm not going to take them out because the details are the same as every other one. Really sharp, really crisp, minimal flash. In fact, no flash, just a little bit of seam, uh, burn, burn marks where the join art for the moulds come together. Brilliant. Right, what have we got here? Road wheels and decals, let's have a look at this. Because I want to see the decals, see how they compare at the time as usual stuff. So first off, we'll get a frame of road wheels out. They are beautiful. Absolutely done in detail. These will be the road wheels for the FAMO. Huge, great road wheels. And then the drive sprockets and four parts. Um, and that will be the, the front cab road wheels. Absolutely stunning. Really, really nice. Crisp detail, well moulded. They're going to be cracking. Uh, let's get the decals out. Tamiya decals, there's never usually a problem with them being in register. They're always in register. The colour is really good. You know, if these are 21-year-old decals, they're all right. They've been kept well. Uh, there is a bit of writing there. I think it's just generic writing. We can get that to focus. There we go. And number plates. Uh, and edge markers for the trailer and the mud guards. That's fantastic. Right, next screw. We have got more figures, more parts for trailers probably. It looks to be a double screw, which it is. Let's have a look at one of them then. So what we've got in here, All right, a seated figure, green, good detail, sharp enough. A couple of heads, one with a cap, one without a cap. Nice facial expressions. Bit of a challenge for me to paint up, but I'm sure I'll give it a go. Uh, equipment, tone and eyes, yeah, really nice sharp detail. Minimal burring, should be okay. All right, we're getting through this. Right, a large sprue. This is the front cab parts of the FAMO. So let's have a look. What have we got? Got front wings, absolutely splendidly molded. Really th thin, detailed molding, crisp plastic, no ejector pins anywhere that you're going to see them. We've got firewall of the engine compartment, we've got the front grill. And I don't know if you can see that in the light. You just catch it, you've got the FAMO badge there. Uh, bonnet with vent covers. Instrument panel, again, fantastic detail. See that in the light, that's going to paint up brilliantly. You're not going to need decals for most of that. You should be able to, a bit of a wash and a paintbrush, and you should be able to pick the details out of that. And nice bit of tread plate on the wheel steps there. Fantastic stuff. Right, I'm running out of space to put these. Right, last big sprue. Uh, trailer parts. Again, I'm not going to take this out because it is the same standard as every other sprue in the box. Beautiful, crisp detail, well moulded, very little burring. And uh, I should, should mention as well that the, the, the connection parts, they're not too big either. So a good, good sharp pair of um, sprue cutters and you're going to get those parts off. No bother at all. Right, let's have a look through the box. I'll grab the box over. So... This is the other parts that's in the, 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 the cardboard carton of the box. So this is the trailer parts, so we'll have a quick look at these. You've got a top and you've got a bottom. Really good Atamia, and they always package the models really well, but you know, these parts that are needing to be kept flat and, and saved through storage, they've done that. Beautiful, beautiful detail. Have a look at it, there's no warping on that part. You can hear it, you can actually see it, all wood grain texture in there, so it's going to take a wash. 
you are going to have to paint it very carefully. I mean, I airbrush everything, so it'll be very, very fine, thin paint layers going down on that uh, to save the detail so I can then put a dark wash on it to bring out all the wood grain texture. But the, the fastening clasps for the boards are very sharp on the finger. The usual Tamiya high quality stuff, absolutely fantastic. I mean, really fantastic molding. And then the underneath, it's an underneath of a steel trailer. But again, because it's been packed well, absolutely razor sharp. You know, it's not had any damage whilst it's been in the box. All right, let's open up this part. What have we got in here? Well, here we go. Here's the ladder frame chassis for the FAMO itself. Beautiful detail, well molded. Um, possibly even early slide molding because you've got the girder frame chassis here. You'd have had to have molds coming into the side to get that as well as other molds coming down from the top and the bottom. So yeah, fantastic. And then you've got the bottom of the transmission case in here. Again, Tamiya, what can you say? Yeah, 1999, if you can read that. Tamiya, 1999. And I actually think this is possibly, because of the age of the box, it's probably an original boxing from 1999. So, you know, I'm just stoked I got it for such a cheap price on eBay. Um, figures, same as before, seating down, good detail. I reckon I'll be able to paint them, give them a go anyway. Bag full of tyres. I'm not going to get them out. Lovely soft rubber. A little bit of a centre seam burr mark there. But probably a swipe or two of a sand and sponge and it'll come off and it'll just look like you've got road wear on the tyres. Strip of poly caps. Ooh, what have we got here? So this is the bag. Little Tamiya screwdriver. We've got some metal chain for the tie down of the tank. We've got thread which we'll need to see how it is. If it's too fluffy, we might not use it. We might replace it with copper wire, but that'll be thread for the tow cable. Uh, we've got the plastic there for the windscreens um, and all the screw bag in there. So the usual Tamiya quality. A little bit of probably 0.25 plastic card. Uh, I did see in the instructions you were gonna need to make some tie down straps for fuel tanks or whatnot, so that's included as well, so you don't have to do that, fantastic. And then finally, I'll get one of them out, we'll get them both out, if I can reach it in here. You have got the pressed steel strengthening bars for the trailer. So by the time you get them a little bit, a little bit bent, that's nothing deadly. That'll straighten up, no bother at all when you get it all together. But that's gonna add the strength to the trailer to take any tank you wanna put on it. Um, and it will take up to Panzer IV or some of the self-propelled guns that the Germans ran. Um, I can't remember the weight load on the trailer, but certainly take a Panzer IV. If you had a Panzer IV with Fruel model, Fruel metal or any other brand of metal tracks, the trailer is going to take the weight of the tracks because it's got those two steel reinforced strengthening parts in it. So there we are. That's all the parts. Wow, what a box full. Um, I'm going to get them back in the box and then... We'll come back onto me and we'll sum up. But yeah, Tamiya, family and tank transport, amazing. Right, see you in a moment. So, there we have it. Uh, Tamiya's 135th scale, FAMO and SDAH116 tank transporter. Uh, what can you say? Well, wow, that's all I can say. It's a massive kit. Um, I know when it came out, it was Tamiya's premier flagship kit. And to be honest with you, it probably still is one of Tamiya's premier flagship kits. They're still available. Uh, the detail looks fantastic. The, the possibilities of what you can turn it into are, are endless. Uh, it's obviously got a number of different theatres of warfare you could model it with. There's a number of different vehicles you could put on the back of it. Um, and the opportunities for detailing it up further than what it already has, again are endless um i'm blown away by the quality of the molding i know it's time yeah but let's let's get this in context 21 year old kit 1999 the molding for that time is spot on and it holds up today uh, it's a really really good kit detailed long build potentially going to be something that you're going to have to come to and you know do a bit leave it come back again just to keep the interest up. It might be something that you'll just dive into and not look at anything else until you get it finished because you're so involved with it. Either way, I think it's going to be a fantastic build. If you can get one, uh, I think I would say, and you're interested in it, go for it. Um, 
I'm really looking forward to doing it. I'm really looking forward to putting in the, the rifle models uh, Panzer IV SJ on the back and uh, doing a bit of a diorama with it. I think it's going to be a stunning uh, mod display model when it's done. So uh, that's it. Tamiya at its best. What can you say? Uh, hopefully you like that, guys. Um, if you want to put any comments down below uh, or ask any questions, please feel free to do that. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, um, I'd be grateful if you could do that too. Try and build the channel and, and, and make it a bit more interesting. Um, so you can you can hit the subscribe button and if you want to hit the notification bell as well so you re receive a notification when I next put a video up. But for now, uh, that's the review done. Um, take care guys, happy modeling and we'll see you soon. Bye.